Welcome back, everyone, to Investor Intel. I'm Peter Clausey. Today we have a new topic with an old friend. Let's say hi to Christopher from Hulgarten & Co., a world-renowned metal strategist. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thanks. Haven't talked to you for a couple of months. How are you doing, Mr. Ecclestone? I'm, I'm fine. I'm just We're just coming out of lockdown here rather than going into it like you are. Okay. So today we have a new topic, which is tin. I'll tell you what I know about tin. Global shortage after World War I, global expiration, then there was a surplus of tin, and I've lost track since. So over to you, sir. Tell us about tin. Um, well, what happened? Tin's, tin's interesting where it's, it's uh, a metal that had an officially sanctioned um, hoarding campaign um, where the International Tin Association built up a phenomenal stock in the 80s and um, it found it couldn't sell it. And so the tin price collapsed and the tin price in, in you know, in inflation adjusted terms has never recovered to the levels that it was back in the 1980s. Um, and because of that, um, there's been an underinvestment. Um, most of the tin um, it, that's not coming out of China is actually alluvial tin. Um, so it comes from uh, big alluvial deposits in Indonesia and Malaysia. Oh. And um, those deposits are easy to mine, uh, but the trouble is, uh, one, it's pretty environmentally destructive, but two, they've been doing it for 100 years, and so they're running out of resources. So now um, miners are being forced back to hard rock tin, and um, with a few exceptions, most tin deposits are under 1%. So you've got to move a lot of rock to get um, that 1%. Okay. So do we still have a shortage of tin in the world? Oh, absolutely. Uh, because what's happening, as I said, is that the alluvial deposits have, um, uh, you, you know, getting phased out because they've been overexploited. And then you've got the problem that uh, the tin price has been – not low, but it's been lower than it's been uh, a good reason to go out there and look for it. And so um, for most of the last 10 years, um, there has been virtually no new production brought on, uh, excepting for the company that we're going to talk about today. And uh, that company is blessed with um, a, uh, a pretty great grade, which is between 3 and 4%. So it's three or four times the sort of, best you could hope for most other deposits. So that's a big kicker for them. Right. So then let's talk about Alphamin Resources, which are, is a company new to me. Now, yeah, Alphamin is very interesting in that I was thinking the other day that, in fact, because of this big crash that happened in the um, in the 80s in the tin market due to the, the failed attempt to corner the market, um, there has not been another new tin major in the world since the 1970s. So for 50 years, there has not been a new tin major. And um, Alpha Men, even though it's only producing 4 to 5% of the global supply of tin, um, it does definitely quantify as a major because um, there are very few companies outside of China that are producing that amount. And if they are, have been producing that amount, they're actually in decline. You know, there's, there's companies like Minsur, which operates in <coughs> Bolivia and uh, Brazil, and then there are these various operators in Indonesia and Malaysia um, that are in decline. But five um, percent definitely makes you a major in the in the tin space. So, how long have, did it take for them to get that mine into production? Um, well, actually, building it has been uh, a task that's taken them three or four years. But uh, the travails uh, went on a lot longer, as we know. Um, the DRC, which is where they are located, has been. Um, to varying extents, uh, a conflict zone for the last 20, 30. Well, in fact, back to the 19, back to the 1960s or 1950s. I would even go um, back to King Leopold. Yeah, no, exactly. So, um, uh, but uh, you know that the conflicts in the DRC is enormous, um, and uh, the conflicts in in the DRC move around. Um, and people regard it as, mon uh, you know, it, it's all conflicted. Uh, in many parts, aren't. And so the area where uh, Alpha Min is um, in their mine, which is called BC, is up in the northeast of the country uh, near the border with uh, Rwanda, uh, Uganda, up the, up the top, 
most of the conflict these days is uh, much lower down in the country. But in 2015, their mind was very brief, well, their project, because it wasn't um, really built at that, that time, was invaded by uh, guerrillas. Um, uh, not, not the furry kind, um, but uh, the, the gun-toting kind. And they were in possession of the site for a few weeks and then departed. But that, you know, coloured perceptions for a while. Uh, tin is on the, um, the list of conflict minerals of Dodds Frank. Um, I don't know if Dodd Frank has died the death or not, um, but I, I think it did. But um, the conflict mineral um, uh, view still reigns, and it is right. one of the five conflict minerals, mainly because of the fact that it was exploited in the DRC by some of these rebel groups. But, you know, when they invaded the site, um, BC had been a um, an artisanal, um, you know, covered with hundreds of locals, you know, just digging little pits and, and ripping some uh, material, high-grade material out of the ground. Um, uh, it wasn't a mine at that stage. It's only been since um, they've ousted the rebels and got things back in order that the mine has really advanced. And it began production in the second half of 2019. So... Usually when a mine starts up, you have hiccups, you're burning through cash, and after yep. a couple of years, you start to generate free cash. Are we there yep. yet? Uh, yes, we are. Uh, that happened really in the second half of last year. The first, uh, as you said, the first uh, few months had some hiccups because they had a bridge that got washed away. And with infrastructure in these countries being very, you know, tenuous at best, um, there was only one bridge that could get their product out. But they got the bridge fixed. And uh, so, you know, they had a period where they had, where they were producing, but they weren't actually selling. So it was piling up. But then, you know, eventually you, you clear the material out. They had big rains at one point last year. You know, welcome to the tropics where they are. Um, so, you know, they've dealt with all those issues. Uh, now it's stabilised. They've got their, um, their product um, storming out the door because of the enormous demand. And we haven't actually spoken about the tin price um, because the tin price hit – nearly 13,000 in the first weeks of um, the pandemic last year. It is now knocking on 26,000 pounds. It has actually got past 26,000. 26,000 per ton, yeah, US dollars. And um, in fact, in the last few months, there have been trades done in a severely depleted uh, spot market at over 30,000 a ton. Does it trade what? futures or all spot like uranium? Uh, no, it's both. It's both. Okay. It's, it's one of the metals that's been traded on the LME since the LME was founded 150 years ago. Um, it has always been a traded metal, so there's no sort of smoke and mirrors to it. Uh, what happened was in the last few months, due to shipping problems, reduced Chinese production, reduced non-Chinese production, um, uh, the warehouses uh, of the big exchanges were de totally depleted. There was nothing there. There was a couple of days worth of metal and um, parties were desperate for the metal. And as we've heard, um, you know, in the auto industry, you know, we've heard about problems in semiconductor supply. Yep. You know, who knows whether part of the problem in the semiconductor supply was actually coming from the tin space because, uh, you know, for, for semiconductor producers, they can afford to pay up. If they need a metal and they need it, need it now, there's no haggling involved. They said, we need it, we'll pay 30000 to get it for the soldering process. So um, the metal has doubled in price, and that has been a mighty tailwind behind um, Alpha Min's earnings. So while it's got a full year of earnings behind it now um, in 2020, where it made a small loss, um, we're expecting it to be making over $60 million a year at the bottom line, after minorities, that that estimate, in fact, is based upon 23,000 a tonne in our a model, um, and the price is now 3,000 higher. So most of that extra 3,000 um, it goes straight to the bottom line. So who knows whether it wouldn't be uh, 75 million, 80 million um, from that much higher price. So Chris, I thank you for your time educating me on tin, introducing me to Alpha Men. I'll do my own research. Uh, and as far as I can tell, you are the first brave analyst to actually put out a report on this company. So good for you. Thank you. Chris Ecclestone, metal strategist from Holgarten & Co. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank Peter you. Peter signing off. Be safe.